Hello, my divinities. Today we do not have the fan on because the days are getting cooler. <laughs> I love it. I love that the days are getting cooler. I love that we're so close to autumn, which is my favorite season of the year. <sighs> I'm so excited. <laughs> we're so close. But um, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Let's go ahead and see what is the energy for today. Turn on the incense. Okay. So I was drawn to a very unusual combination of tarot. So today we're going to be using the Deep, Dark, and Dangerous Oracle, followed by the Ancestral Path Tarot and the uh, Tarot de la Nuit. Okay. So what is the energy for today? What is the energy for today? Hmm. So we've got, I don't know if this is pronounced Caron or Reciprocity. I don't know, but it's one of the dark cards. And then we've got Dormandor, the Midgard Serpent, Cycles. And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And then we've got Selkie, Freedom. Um, and the Midgard Serpent is a dangerous card. And then we've got a deep card. So we've got all three, deep, dark, and dangerous. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's read these messages. Let's start with number two, the Freedom card. Okay. So it says, you can only pretend for so long before you must find truth again. Seek authenticity. Containing yourself in a form that is not your own is rarely successful long term. Find what sets you free. Acknowledge your inner truth. Be aware someone may be deceiving you under false pretenses. Hmm. So it's talking about the Selkie myth. Um, let's go ahead and... I know a lot of people already know the Selkie mythos, but let's let's read it. Selkie mythos is shared in places where the sea, excuse me, where the sea is a truly dominant force and where colonies of seals live like the Shetlands and other Scot Scottish Ireland's, islands, the Faroes, Norway, and Iceland. I have personally read and listened to a lot of stories about Selkies since I have a kin bloodline that is Selkie central. The mythos of the Selkie was something I dreamed about since I was small, and there are many versions of the Selkie mythos, but most involve beautiful haunting imagery of female shapeshifters, women who live in the body of seals, but who can transform into enchanting women who appear human on land. A typical Selkie story is of a human man who watches a Selkie playing in a cove. She, at times, he observes, comes ashore for various reasons, dropping her skin and shapeshifting into a woman irresistible to him. When her land business is complete, she steps back into her seal skin and returns to the wild ocean that is her home. The human man falls in love with the silky woman and decides to wait for her to next transform from her seal form, and when she does, to take possession of and hide the seal skin. If a silky seal skin is withheld, they cannot return to the ocean. Unable to find their seal skin, selkies are adrift in the human world. They become reliant on the kind, <laughs> kind, human man who takes care of them and who begins to teach them the human way of things on land. Often the Selkie and the human man marry and even have children, but the wild heart of the woman is of course wedded truly to her life in the sea. She wants to go home. She yearns for her true self. Eventually, the Selkie finds her skin and is reunited with her authentic form. Without a backward glance, she steps into it, allows herself to be enveloped by her true shape once again, and re-enters the aquatic world. Some stories tell of Selkies coming back every now and again to visit their children. Some say they never ever, ever return to the world of men who contained them under false pretenses. And yes, there were male Selkies reportedly too. Incredibly beautiful in form and very seductive, it was said that these Selkies looked for lonely human women to fornicate with. Lonely fishermen's wives were said to be ideal targets. Rarely was there a story where a male selkie was parted from his skin like the females, so male selkies seemed to have avoided the trap of being made into someone else's unwilling husband or lover for a time. Again, it seems human women and selkies 
Again, it seems human women and Selkie females get the raw deal. The essence of the Selkie is the idea of the triumph of authenticity over pretense and containment. Also, the deep pull of the wild self. After all, if the Selkies got their true skins back, they did not hesitate to leave the human world behind. And that included even leaving their own children. Hmm. Okay. Now, number 18, Reciprocity Caron. Okay, so this one says, you must find balance in acts of giving and receiving in all ways, but in particular in your give and take with the earth, you must learn to reciprocate. When someone died in ancient Greece or Rome, a coin was placed either in the mouth of the dead or upon their eyes. This was an important part of the ritual of death because without coins, the recently departed could not pay the ferryman. Charon was the ferryman of Hades, the son of Erebus and Nyx. His responsibility was to ferry the souls of the dead over the rivers of death, and so he is what is called a psychopomp, a guide of the dead. The two rivers he worked were the Styx and sometimes the Asheron, the river of sorrow. These rivers separated the worlds of the dead and the living, so it was important that the newly dead were able to journey across safely. Also, Charon ensured that no, no dead traveled back the other way. He was also responsible for ferrying certain heroes and gods who were alive and had a task within the underworld. For example, Odysseus, Orpheus, Heracles, Dionysius, and Sisyphus all were ferried by Charon, but were not dead. This was an inherently dangerous journey for the living with many perils, including falling into the water themselves. The river Styx itself was highly magical and deadly and lethal to new souls and people who were alive. If anyone bathes in the sticks and survives, everywhere the water touches on that person becomes invulnerable. This is how Achilles, 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 whatever. This is how Achilles became the became almost immortal after his mother dipped him in the sticks, all except the heel that she held him by. That small exclusion was his downfall, and he was shot by an arrow on that spot. What happened if the ferryman wasn't paid? Some myths say that the souls were left wandering indefinitely, but most suggest. There was a hundred year penalty until a soul could come to Charon and be taken across into the realm of the dead. The act of reciprocity, the payment for Charon's labor and, and care, became an important act in the respectful care of the dead. Hmm. Okay. And last but not least, Jormunder. And again, don't judge me, I'm probably saying that wrong. Number 34. There is a time for everything. You don't always have to be striving and making things happen. Connect with the seasons and flow with them. Hmm. Okay, so it's pronounced your your mungand. Oh, your mungand is one big monster. Often referred to as the Midgard serpent, this creature is so large it fits its nose to tail around the whole world of Midgard. Its size stabilizes the realm, so it cannot be removed from its position. It is also the child of Loki and the giantess Angorboda, and has its siblings, the goddess Hel of the underworld and Fenrir, the great wolf. The god Odin, foretelling that Loki's children will destroy the gods, decides to throw Jormungand in the ocean surrounding Midgard. Unfortunately for Odin, the serpent grows into such a size that it is able to hold its tail in its mouth. The end of the world, a time called Ragnarok, will begin with Jormungand letting go of its tail. The main enemy of Jormungand is, of course, the god Thor. Thor is a deity who tries to work for the people and destroy evil when he finds it. His half-brother Loki knows that the serpent is one of the only ways to destroy his brother, so he births the living weapon. The serpent isn't just large. It's able to spit poison from its breath, and if it bites you, the venom means certain death. It would be hard to kill once the time for Ragnarok came. The Norse myth of Ragnarok is as dramatic as it is beautiful. We see within it a story of cycles and fresh starts, deaths, renewals, and birthing of new ways and new time. Ragnarok is the essence of all of this, a ripening of the world, a rotting, and then a death and rebirth. The first sign that Ragnarok has begun is with the Midgard serpent releasing its tail from its mouth and there being a great disturbance in the water. 
huge waves begin to thrash the shores of Midgard. This is a warning to all. Soon, your Jormungand slithers its way up the land and sprays its lethal poison as it goes, ruining the air and water. It meets with its brother Fenrir, whose eyes are said to glow like the embers of a fire and who becomes hungry for blood. They join up with other allies on a lonely plain where all will battle the gods. A great battle ensues for the balance of the universe. The battle between Thor and the Midgard Serpent is a savage one, described in great detail in the poetic Edda. Thor eventually manages to kill Jormungand, but then staggers nine steps and dies, poisoned by the serpent's venom. The waters rise, many of the old gods and giants die, and the world is made anew. Okay. So. <laughs> what all three cards had in common. First, a major, I mean, massive, massive cycle coming to an end. A death, because remember, this is the ferryman that takes that takes people from the land of the living to the land of death, um, to the world of the dead, and reclaiming, someone reclaiming their authenticity. So let's look into that, because that, that's pretty dramatic overall. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what this is talking about. What's today's collective concern? We start with the moon, followed by the empress, followed by the magician, the hierophant. Let's do this first row and then we'll, we'll pull more in a second. Um, Overall energy, the Prince of Sacred Circles. So whatever this change is, it's it's really big. That all three cards kind of highlighted how massive this change is. Because remember, the Selkie was in a whole world that wasn't even her own, right? She didn't want to be there. And then as soon as she could, she'd go back home. So this is like someone was trapped in a place they didn't want to be. And with the moon card, maybe they were just very confused about how to get out of this place, how to return to their to their best self. I do want to mention the fact that even the Hierophant in this deck, this is the Oracle of Delphi. So it could have been the Hierophant represents a teacher, a mentor, somebody you look up to, somebody who is an authority figure. Um, it could have been that this Empress needed some sort of guidance. And she has received that guidance now. And once once she processed and understood magician energy. Now, for some of you, this is future tense. Maybe this is still coming towards you. Um, I want to read this Prince of Sacred Circles. Hold on. So the Prince of Sacred Circles represents father-son learning experiences, re reverence for the growth processes made possible through the union of the sun and the earth, can represent one's genetic father or a fatherly role model, a tutor, teacher, our mentor who shares knowledge and wisdom, one who nurtures the young, helping to develop newly planted ideas and concepts. Again, <laughs> teacher, mentor. So. Two cards that represent a teacher or a mentor helping somebody grow, helping somebody step into that place of um, learning from their experiences, making better choices. And especially with the magician here, being able to manifest, sorry, I'm talking a lot so I don't want my mouth to get dry being able to manifest at a much more rapid pace because all four cards are major arcanas the moon the empress magician hierophant all major arcanas so let's 
Let's read the moon and then clarify, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the moon is understanding and flowing with cycles. Again, your moon was also about cycles. Perceiving patterns and events, creating patterns of meaning in life, weaving destiny, distinguishing between webs of illusion and reality, coming to the end of a cycle. You may be a fly caught in a web or a poorly woven pattern may have to be undone and rewoven. Resistance to adapting to cycles may create roadblocks in your path. So that was it. <laughs> Somebody might have been a little stuck there for a minute because they were resistant to the cycle and now they've stopped resisting. Clarify the moon card. Ten of Pentacles. Hmm. Clarify the moon card. Nine of Cups. Queen of Wands. Okay. Overall energy, Six of Pentacles. So remember how the, the Charon energy was talking about reciprocity, about giving and receiving connected to the universe. I mentioned this before already when we were talking about sacrifices, that not all the sacrifices are literal offerings. You know, you don't have to go burn a cow or something like that to make an offering. Sometimes the offering are that we have to let go of certain things in our life. And I believe that with the six of pentacles, the universe, you are stuck because the universe is like, we cannot help you until you let go of this. Because whatever you were resistant to letting go, or even now, because remember for some of you, this is current, for some of you I'm reading future, okay? Whatever was, was being struggled to either let go or you're still struggling to let go is like a, a weight. And it's not that the universe didn't want to help you, they couldn't. Think of it like um, like a helicopter, right? Helicopters are a lot lighter than an airplane. So when you are, you know in the movies where they're like, there's a, a ladder or a rope and someone's hanging on to the hel helicopter. If there's too much weight, the helicopter will go down too. So think of it like that. You're the helicopter and there was this heavy weight you're holding on to. And the universe is like, well, we're trying to guide you out of there, but you will will not even be able to lift off until you let go of that. And we're, we're wasting time. But you're very resistant. Now, you have stepped back into your authentic self. And Ten of Pentacles. For some of you, this could have been family. For others of you, this could have been... Um, Maybe you were worried about your material wealth or some sort of stability, some sort of security. But the irony is that letting go of this is opening you up to true stability, to a true security and wealth. Nine of Cups. Not only are you about to enter a period of a lot of prosperity and and abundance, but also a lot of emotional fulfillment, a lot of happiness and joy. It's going to feel like all your wishes are coming true. You're going to step into an era. You know, the, the Taylor Swift eras tour, <laughs> that that's, it's going to be big. It's going to be, that's why it's called era because it's a whole movement. You're going to step into a period of your life where you're going to feel like a goddess or a God, depending on, you know, what you identify with. Okay, but it was like, um, it had to be a, a trade here. It couldn't, it couldn't happen unless you were ready to let go. And whatever you were resistant to letting go, you stopped resisting and you move forward. Clarify the Empress. Ten of Wands. Clarify the Empress. Oh, I didn't flip over. Clarify the Empress.
five of pentacles. And the angel de la nuit. Overall energy, nine of swords. See, that's what I'm telling you. For some of you, you're still in it. And for others, you already let go. I went to read these cards from the little book because this deck is slightly different than normal tarot. And I want you guys to, to see what, what it represents. The nine of swords. Okay. This is the nine of swords. It's the nightmare I'm in. My life has become a nightmare. It used to be dancing dreams, but now it is a devastated field. My little music box is broken. I'm never going to dance again. Yet the moonlight shines upon me. Deep in my heart, I feel those moonbeams are telling me not to give up on hope and that my negative thoughts can only bring me an even worse reality. Maybe I worry too much. Do you too? Could it be that things are not as bad as we think they are? How can we wake up from this nightmare? In my mirror, I see a reflection of a girl who should love herself more and do all she can to feel better instead of despairing endlessly. Keywords, fear, suffering, negative beliefs, bringing a negative reality. Too much worrying. We've been addressing this quite consistently. So for those of you who are still in that energy, this is going to be in the future. What's going to happen once you let go? But let's read a little further. Let's look at the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands represents burning out soul. I wanted the castle, the luxury life, and the princess dress. I've got them now, but I discovered the heavy responsibilities that come along with them, and they're quite a burden to me. It's like my dress is on fire. I'm burning out. Maybe the same kind of flames are blazing you. Too much work, too much tasks, and too weak shoulders. I want my carefreeness back. Fire is a serious th warning that the pressure is getting too strong, outshining all the wonders gleaned along the way. It is urgent for you and for me that we take some rest and that we reorganize our lives so we can better enjoy the fruits of our efforts. Keywords, heavy burden or responsibilities, need to delegate and strong pressure. So if you are still in this energy, it's telling me or it's telling you that you're not very organized or, or you are, but maybe overly so to the point where you're really stressed out. You've got way too much stuff on your plate. You are burning out. So you have to prioritize what's more important. There are some things you have to take off your plate and others that you're going to have to delegate. And it's like you don't know how to do that or you're struggling to figure out what is more important than something else. Because remember, the selfie was about going back to her freedom, right? Whatever it is that you're doing right now has you so pressured, so stressed that you've lost your spark. You've lost your joie de vie, <laughs> your joy of life. You're not enjoying yourself anymore. You're, you're going through the motions. Let's see, the five of pentacles. Five of pentacles says, a queen yesterday, today a beggar. I was on top and I fell down. I've lost everything. I was so greedy, so obsessed with money, that money ran away from me. Maybe I deserved such a desolation, and now I wander like a beggar in coldness and solitude. I feel you are in the same situation. I feel you're in the same state. I feel your anxiety and your fears. I feel your sensation of being an outcast, abandoned, rejected, pushed away. But you know you only lose what was never yours, and isolation is a bad fortress. Turn to the ones who love you and ask them for help. Don't stay alone in the cold. Maybe some light will shine at last in this gray sky. Keywords, loss, failure, poverty, anxiety, isolation, lack of hope, need of help. You know, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it again. I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship where the other person is like obsessed with you. And I always wanted that. I always thought that that, that was what I wanted until I got it. And then I realized it was exhausting. Um, it was exhausting because there was always this worry about if what I say or I'm going to do is really going to hurt this person without me ever meaning to hurt them is 
the way I present myself, is, is it going to bother them today? The way I speak, am I going to say, or it, it, the inflection of my voice, is it going to make them feel like I don't care about them? It was this constant, it, it led to so much exhaustion. I was just like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. When we obsess over someone or something, we push them away instead of attracting them to us. That's why the, the whole mantra should be, I don't chase, I attract. Because people, when we, when we think about chasing, we think about, oh, I'm not running after it. But if you're constantly thinking about them and you're in this state of constant anxiety over this person or this thing, they can feel it. That is a chase. You are chasing them energetically. When you're in this place of knowing your value, knowing your worth, you don't even worry about it because what's yours is yours. You're in this place of, I know that if this person is meant for me, if this job is meant for me, if this life is meant for me, it's going to come to me. I'm going to do my part. And then what happens, happens. In Spanish, que sea lo que Dios quiera. Let it be God's will. May God's will play out. So I feel like some of you have stepped into this energy and you're over here. You're, you're good. You've released it. Your wishes are coming true. You're stepping into material abundance. But there's others of you that are still very anxious. Now, I love that the angel that I came out. Let's go look at that one. I forgot where it's at because this is a, not a normal card. It doesn't really. Here we go. Bonus card. I am the angel of night. If you've picked me, then my message to you is that your inner night is soon coming to an end. You may have walked in darkness for some time, but soon, very soon, a new full moon will rise and will show you the way. My phosphorescent butterflies are here to guide you. Believe in luck. Believe in me. Believe in you. My black soft wings are protecting you from now on. Into your ear, I whisper my sweet lullaby. Have no fear, honey. Everything is going to be fine. The night is nothing to be afraid of anymore. And the warm sun that you hold within is ready to shine again. And interestingly enough, remember the overall card was Father Son. <laughs> so I feel like if you felt like you were, you were in a really dark place, you were in a place of feeling like you used to be great and now you've fallen. You, you were burning out. You were in anxiety and, and sorrow and, you know, a lot of worry. You've got, you're being guided out of the night. You're being shown some sort of, of light that's going to improve your current circumstances. Um, I'm going to stop part one because otherwise it, it'll take forever to load onto Facebook. Um, if you want to continue watching the reading with me on part two, then it'll be on the next tier up. And if you are already a subscriber, then I will see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.